Hey cuties! So today I am going to be doing a how to study or a tips on how to study video. I have been so highly requested to do this video. So here we go, I'm gonna give my tips. Speaking of tips, I have new hair. Very different, I don't have my pink streak anymore on the side. I had to get rid of that. For my future career, we can't have like fun, colorful hair. So instead I dyed extensions. So my natural hair is now just all blonde and boring, but you know, I had to do it to grow up and be an adult. And these are just my extensions that I dyed. Let me know if you guys like this or want a tutorial. Anyways, let's get into the point of this video, which is how to study. The first thing that I wanted to say if I give a whole bunch of tips or suggestions for studying and none of these work for you, don't do them. Do what works for you. That's what I want to stress the most. If there's things I say that don't work for me and they work for you, do it. If there's things that I don't even mention and they work for you, leave them in the comments down below because you may help, help somebody else. Tip number one is turn off all distractions. Distractions are of course going to distract you from your work and studying and ingesting the material in your brain. This means internet. This will be hard if you're doing internet research on the computer because just one click away is YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. So for not going to those websites or distracting yourself from your internet research, you gotta have willpower. Choose not to procrastinate, get it done, and use the internet to your advantage, not to your disadvantage. Because you can go on all those distractions as soon as you're done your studying. Cell phone. The cell phone is a huge distraction. Whenever I'm studying in the library, I see people on their cell phone or they're studying and then their cell phone goes off and you can tell that they were in a deep study and now they're not. So turn it off and just put it away. If you're in your house, put it in a separate room or if you have kids or if you have work on call or if you have other emergencies, keep your ringer on beside you but try not to check it all the time. How I do this, if you guys have a phone where you can lock it, I know most phones do nowadays, I keep mine locked so that just phone calls and texts can come in and if I want to check myself and I physically have to unlock it. The cell phone is a big one. Keep it away. TV. This was always my big one. My big distraction was the TV. The TV will distract you from doing your work and getting it done. Turn it off or if the TV's on, if you have other people living in your house with you, go into another room, shut your door so that you can't hear it. Some people think, oh, I like to have the TV on while I study, but yet you're like this on the TV. Music. This is a controversial one for some people. Everybody's different. And I know that there is music that does calm people down and help them study. People like my brother, he studies better with music on. People like me, it distracts me. Cause I'll be like studying and I'll be like, oh yeah. Go put your records on, tell me your favorite song. Me. Like I just jam out whenever I hear a song. But if you have songs and you love music and that does help you and you can concentrate and relax, I know there also is studying music and relaxing music, then use that if that works for you. But if you feel that it is a distraction, like me, number two is your environment or where you are when you study. Choosing a place to study is crucial because it'll either cons help you concentrate or it'll distract you from your concentration. Now, where can I study? What environments can I study? In. Depending on your school, there are usually places to study in the school after hours. So if you go home, it's like 7 p.m. Some schools have the library will still be open or there'll be study rooms still open after hours. If your school doesn't have that, you can always study at home. Just find a room in your house that isn't distracting. Uh, loud talkers like my family. My family, when they tell stories, they tell it so the whole city can hear. Libraries, public libraries, they're, they're a great way to get away and study. And you're basically forced to be quiet in there. Also, they have great research resources. So if you're doing a paper, not just studying, if you're doing a paper or you're not sure of something, there's research resources all over the library. There's the use of the internet if you don't have internet connection at home. There's printers if you don't have a printer and spaces that you can use for yourself to study like little cubicles, friends houses. This is another controversial one. For me, from my experience, studying doesn't get done. It's like, hey mom, I'm going to Bing Bong's house to study. And then you get to Bing Bong's house and you're like, let's party. And then you get chips and pop and games. It's like, woo, we're studying. 
doesn't work for me. But there are people that do do study groups and they have study buddies and they work beautifully. So if that works for you, then do it. If it's a distraction, choose not to do that. Work and then play. If you can do this constructively, I would suggest it because two minds are better than one. So if you're not really grasping a concept or if you're not sure of something, the other mind or the other minds in the room can help you and give you some insight. Number three is tools that you can use. Flashcards. This is my personal method of studying. I love this method. It works the best for me. There are tons of different flashcards you can get. They're really recipe cards or ruled index cards is what they're called. Um, I get mine at the dollar store. They're only a dollar for usually a hundred. My favorite ones are just these blank white ones. One blank side and then a ruled side. So it's great for putting definitions on the word on this side and then the definition on the back so that you can pull out the word and see if you know the definition. Or I came across these colored ones. So if that helps, you can do it for each subject or each chapter you're working on, whatever the class is. For example, these are the ones I've already written out for my, what is this? This is my anatomy and physiology class. Five functions of epithelial tissue. And then I have the five functions on the back. Two pathways of blood circulation. There's a lot of stuff in anatomy I needed to know. So this personally works for me. Like I'll pull it up, I'll be like, what is that? Mm, I don't know. And then I'll put them into piles of ones that I don't know and then ones that I do know. The ones that I do know, I'll put off to the side because you shouldn't restudy the things that you already know. The pile that I didn't know and then I'll re-go over that in the same fashion until I know all of them. They're great for definitions, concepts, remembering things. Another tool is reading your notes. Reread your notes that you are going to be tested on on your exam. Just reread them. See what you don't know and what you do know. Make sure that you're taking the notes in and not just simply reading them. I use papers to block sections of the notes so that I can fully grasp the information. Like I'll block a section and say, okay, what's going to be next? And then I'll try to test myself to see what's going to be the next line. Quiz with a friend. Give your notes to somebody. Say here, quiz me on it. Ask me anything in these notes or in these flashcards. Ask me a question. It doesn't have to be a friend. It can be a family member, your boyfriend. This is a great way if you have a willing participant because you don't know what they're going to ask. It can be anything. So it's kind of like a test or a quiz situation. Another one is old tests or assignments that you've gotten back that have been graded. You can see what you got wrong and you can study those even more. If your teacher doesn't give you back your exam marks, you can always ask them. I'm wanting to study for the exam. Is there any way that I could get this exam back or this test back? Or you can sometimes ask them for previous exams that they've held in their classroom. The teachers will most likely lend them out to you. That is a great tip because not many people think of that. And that has helped me through high school go over it and I can give it back to you tomorrow. Or do you think I could go over it right now? Or whatever the case may be. They usually, it depends on the teacher, right? Some teachers are cray. Next is acronyms or phrases. So if you're not grasping something, or if you can't remember the five theories of electricity, and there's five of them, get the first letter of each function and create it into an acronym or a story or a phrase that you can remember. That's what I do a lot and it really does help me. Remember these. Take breaks. Taking breaks will help you soak in and ingest the material in your brain. If you're just studying hard and going hard for hours and hours and hours, it can be brutal. You're gonna feel sleepy and tired and over it and taking breaks will help you re-energize, play a game, go watch a movie, get on Facebook or whatever you love to do for a break and then go back to studying. Sleep to nourish and replenish. Sleep helps, it regenerizes you. No procrastination. This is so hard for me. Don't study just the night before. Try studying a few nights before or a week before, whatever works for you. Nutrition, eat, drink, replenish. Food for you is food for your brain. Number five is a hard one, it's try not to stress. If you're not understanding something, don't get all stressed and frustrated. Try to figure it out, try to 
ask questions, go online and try to see if there's answers on Google, talk to your teacher, talk to your friends. Just try not to stress because it'll do more harm than good. So those were all my tips and tricks for studying. Those are the ones that I personally do. I hope it helped you in some way. Always remember to do what works best for you. I should actually say right now because I know I'm gonna get questions because this is a how to study video. Um, I'm in mortician school and I'm going to be a mortician, as most of you know. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys!